Hello everyone, this is Sir Gantelot. Welcome to my channel and welcome to the course in Microsoft Project 2016. I am creating and loading courses for other versions of Microsoft Project, but anything I cover in this course will be applicable to other versions as well. In this course, there are 11 lessons and in those lessons, what I'm aiming to do is to show you how Microsoft Project can support the full end-to-end -end life cycle of project management, how you can support everything from initiating and planning a project through executing, monitoring and controlling, all the way to project closure. For each lesson, if you go to the individual lesson video, there'll be a detailed synopsis before we get into that lesson of everything the lesson contains. But in this intro video, I'd just like to give you an overview of each of the lessons. In lesson one, I'm going to give you a comfort level with getting into and using Microsoft Project, just navigating the interface, how to open a new schedule or an existing schedule, how to change the various views, how to use the ribbons and invoke the commands on those ribbons, and how to close and save a project, equipping you basically to move into the other lessons of the course. In the second lesson, we're going to get to the core of every project schedule, and that is project tasks, the work that needs to be performed for the project to be complete, the activities to which we're going to be assigning people that then, as they unfold, the work of the project is happening. But we're not just entering tasks. What we're going to do is to show how we can link them together to reflect dependencies. We're going to organize them into phases and subphases through the process of indenting and outdenting. We're going to look at the different task types that exist, and we're going to look at what is the difference between manual scheduling and auto scheduling within a project schedule. Now, the tasks that we've just been talking about don't deliver themselves. They don't magically just happen. We need people to do the work. We need to have people resources that we can assign to tasks, and we need other resources as well to make projects happen. We need uh, consumable resources, we need raw materials, all of those we need to assign within our project and make sure that we're not over allocating. Before we start executing, in lesson four, we're going to look at some customization we can do, some making Microsoft Project more accurately reflect what it is that you do within your projects, very specifically looking at working times in this case. The reality is that all organizations don't follow the same working weeks. Different organizations work different days of the week. And then when you move out into different countries in the world, that is most definitely the case. Not only that, public holidays vary. Uh, what is a working day in one country may be a holiday, a day of non-work in another country. If we can tell Microsoft Project what the working hours are up front, then later, as we start entering tasks and making changes, we don't have to be continually thinking, well, hang on a minute, is next Monday a working day or a non-working day, for example? Okay, in lesson five, before we start executing, we need to make sure that the schedule we've put together is an achievable and doable schedule and that we thoroughly understand everything that it is that we've planned. We need to know where the bottlenecks are in our project. We need to double check that we're not over allocating resources. We need to understand any critical paths that run through sections or entire uh, schedules. Then we can think about baselining and executing our project. As we do execute the project, almost immediately, some things are not going to be happening the way we planned them to. Some things might be taking longer or taking less time than expected, or the financial aspects, the money we allocated may be too much or not enough for certain tasks. Whatever's going on, we need to update project to show what is actually happening, not just what we planned to happen. Equally importantly, if there are variances against what was planned, we may well need to replan the path forward to try to meet our original objectives, or at least be able to justify why those objectives need to be modified some. In lesson seven, we're going to get back into customizing, but this time the look and feel of project, maybe looking at the color schemes and changing those. 
changing the way the views work, uh, changing and adding commands to the ribbon so that project looks the way we want it to, or maybe more importantly, the way our organization wants it to, so that it's consistent to the look and feel of other applications that we use within our organization, or just to meet your own preferences. We're going to be doing some more modification of projects in lesson eight, but this time we're going to be changing functionality. Project responds a particular way out of the box when we make changes to tasks or make changes to the number of resources assigned to tasks. It responds in a predictable way, but we may want to change the way it responds. Uh, more of that when you dig into that particular lesson, lesson eight, all of the options we're going to be changing, we're going to be doing so through the options settings area. In lesson nine, we'll basically recognize that many times you as a user of Microsoft Project may be responsible for more than one project. You may be managing or at least scheduling more than one project. And in some cases, those projects may be related to one another. They may roll up into programs or portfolios of related projects. You might also want to create cross-project dependencies between those projects. In lesson 10, another aspect of working in a multi-project environment is that some of our resources may be used on other projects at the same time. We need to make sure we've got a true picture of the availability and utilization of resources, not just in a single schedule, but across the organization. Lastly, we're going to be looking at a couple of things. One is macros, how we can record keystrokes. It may be, for example, that when you get ready to produce a report from your project schedule, there are certain things that you always do. You might invoke a particular view. You might apply a filter. Uh, you might uh, change a couple of uh, settings in that view before you print. Well, if maybe you have to do 10 or 12 clicks every time before you print anything, then we can record a macro that automates those clicks for us. And then we just have to click a couple of things and the macro runs and sets up everything for us. It's also the case that you can download add-ins from the Microsoft Store to add some functionality to project. And some organizations do create their own add-ins. We'll look briefly at the add-in features and functions of project. Now, in order to get uh, the best value from the course, what I would suggest, firstly, for every lesson, set the YouTube quality setting to the highest available. That way, you'll avoid any fuzziness as I'm demonstrating you the actual tool hands-on. Uh, you'll be able to see the menus and the cursor moving around clearer. As I demonstrate major features and functions, what I would do if I were you is get another screen or another computer and open up your own version of Microsoft Project and follow along. Follow along as I do the demos. Now, if I will be trying to move at a pace that you can do that, but if I get ahead of you, then just pause the video, rewind and replay, and do that as many times as necessary to catch up on anything that wasn't clear the first time I mentioned it. Just in passing, it's worth mentioning that if you hold a PMI credential, a Project Management Institute credential, such as a PMP certification, Project Management Professional. One of the things that you need to do over the course of three years is to gather and submit professional development units in order to maintain your certification. By watching these uh, videos and following along and learning from them, you can submit education PDUs, uh, and they fall into the category online or digital media, technical, uh, PDUs and uh, type in that they are project schedule management related. If you do find the course and uh, videos within the course helpful to you, then I would ask if you would to like each lesson. Uh, subscribe to the channel that way, and especially if you enable notifications, as I do load those additional courses that I mentioned, then you'll know that they are there and you can go and take advantage of those as well. You might want to also let other people know that the courses are here so that they can benefit from them as well. One thing you might feel inclined to do is to buy me a coffee. Well, you probably can't do that physically, but you can do so virtually 
by going to buymeacoffee.com slash Sir Gandalot. I'll put the link in the video description as well, but just go directly there and you can buy me a coffee so that I have enough caffeine in my system to keep cranking out videos. And if you do that, I'm very grateful. Thank you very much. But if you don't do that, I'm equally grateful for the fact that you did watch the video. Thank you for doing that. Watch the lessons. Hopefully you'll learn from them and that will be my reward right there. Thank you.